testing and troubleshooting your holiday light show. It's one of those things all of us go through. At some point, you're gonna have an issue. You're gonna have a channel count issue. You're gonna hook a prop up to the wrong port on a controller. This hobby can bring out more issues than you would ever believe. And today we're gonna go over the process I go through when I run into an issue on how I fix it. I'm Charlie and this is an FPP short. So the very first thing that I always make sure I have is some type of test sequence that lets me see the layout that I'm working with. I'll show you what I use right now. I'll also have a link to this test sequence down in the description if you want to download it for yourself. Here we are in x Lights, and we're on the Sequencer tab. And I use a pretty simple 30 second sequence. It goes through a bars effect and just kind of goes up. I have a bunch of different colors selected. Then it goes horizontally with the same set of colors. And then it'll go into a single strand skip where it has a band size of one. It actually does not skip, so the skip size is zero. A couple of advances just see the colors change through each prop. But the key is putting the render style as a single line model as a pixel. What this does is this actually treats each model as a single pixel. This section of my roof outline will be yellow. The other section of my garage might be orange. I have a spinner that's red here. I have a spinner that's pink. Everything should be a solid color. Every single individual prop should be a solid color. This lets me know if I have too little of count on a prop or if I'm daisy chaining props together, maybe my count was off. If I have overlapping channels, it would definitely be apparent here. The other thing I like to do when I test is to actually take Take a video of it so I can slow it down a little bit and I'm not having to look all over and document stuff in my mind. I can bring it back inside and kind of go one by one if I see issues, pick them off and solve them one by one through the video. So there's a couple of really simple issues. A lot of them are going to come down to counts. Do you have the right count on the prop? Let's say the top of my garage, I have a single line model. Let's say I have that set for 78 nodes instead of 76. Two nodes on the next portion would be lit up in that test sequence when it when it goes to the single strand and showing each model separately. And I could come in, I could back that down. The other issue you can run into that's not as apparent is having too many nodes on a single prop that does not daisy chain. That one's a little harder to identify because at the end of the day, center on that model will not be centered. It'll be shifted towards the end because it thinks that there's actually more pixels on it. So that's probably one of the hardest things to identify. But if it's a single prop on a port it's or the last prop on a port, it's not going to cause many issues except for when you're viewing your sequence. Some things just might not be centered or look proper because it doesn't have the right count of nodes on that line or that model. One of the biggest issues from a couple of years ago, it's not as big today, is overlapping channels. That was very common before we had the full x lights control option when setting up our controllers. But if you're using controllers that are not fully controlled by x lights, then this could become an issue. One thing I always try to double check first before I really start going into anything else is I will come into the layout tab. I will select any model. I don't want a group. I want a model. And then I will hit control A on my keyboard and that will go through and select all my models. And what I wanna do here then is I wanna right click where it's selected. And if I had overlapping channels, I would get a message here about make channels not overlapping or something like that. I haven't seen it in a while, mostly because I run FPP based controllers and x -Lights has full control of them. But if you see that message, more than likely you have overlapping channels somewhere in your display and that needs to be fixed. If you click that option, that will allow you to actually fix it. And if you did not fix this and you re-upload it out to your controllers or something like that, you're going to end up with the same issue over and over because you have overlapping channels. So I check for overlapping channels. I don't have any. Let's say I have flashing lights coming on my mini trees over here, this first mini tree. I know it's not overlapping channels. So we just check for that. So there's a couple of things it could be. One of them is between the master and the actual controller driving the pixels is overlapping data because the FSEQs are different. So the one thing I like to do is I would hop over to the controller tab that is running off my K8, my little mini tree. There's mini tree one here. And I would want to click upload to it. So I want to upload the outputs again, just to make sure that everything's 
refresh if I made any changes in the layout. Maybe I forgot to do this before, maybe something failed in FPP Connect. But after I click Upload Layout, I wanna look for the message down in the lower left-hand corner saying Culp Lights Output Upload Complete. And that will tell me that it completed successfully. But then I'm gonna to wanna to make sure to kind of re-upload the sequence again if there's an audio track, kind of give it a fresh start after any changes were made. So under Tools, you can go to Batch Render. And it's usually easiest to troubleshoot with a single sequence. There's no reason to re-render 20 sequences if you're only doing testing. Have an easy test sequence that renders quickly and you won't spend a ton of time rendering. I just re-rendered this test sequence that we saw. It's gonna save it. And I'm gonna go under Tools and then FPP Connect. I'm gonna re-upload this out to my controllers. And I wanna make sure I get this to all my controllers properly. I have a video on FPP Connect if you wanna learn more about it. I'm not gonna go over a ton of it today, but I'm gonna make sure to select my test per model sequence here. And I have all my active controllers selected. I don't need that one. V2 Sparse going to all the remotes, V2 to the master. I am sending media to them all because I have some fairly large SD cards and I don't really care. I'd rather have the media on there than not. For models, all of my remotes are getting local the master is getting all and then pixel hat cape i want to make sure that they are selected if they are active so since this is going out to a virtual matrix i want to make sure that is selected as well i have my sequence selected here so i am going to click upload now that that's done at this point we could go back out and test again hopefully our issue is solved this should have reconfigured our ports on our fpp based controllers or any controller that can be essentially fully controlled by x lights but if it's not fixed the problem's probably based more in your controller itself. At this point, we're going to hop over into the master, and I don't see any error messages, so that's good. More than likely, the issue is actually going to be on an individual controller and not your master, or it could be something between your master and your individual controller aren't correct, and that needs to be fixed. But I'll show you what I have found, and in FPP6, and higher, it seems that this helps solve some problems I've had. I can't necessarily say it is the source of them, but it has helped solve them for me. Under input output setup, there are pixel overlay models. By default, anytime you do FPP connect, it'll automatically check this to create overlays from your outputs. On your master, I haven't had much of an issue on my master itself, but what I like to do is kind of just start from scratch on this, is I'll select the first one, scroll all the way down to the bottom, holding shift and control on my keyboard, select the last one, and that'll select all of them, and then hit delete hit save. It'll ask me to restart FPPD. I will do that now. And essentially just kind of cleared out all the pixel overlay models. Here I am in my K8. This is the one connected to my mini tree with the star that we're saying has the issue. And I want to do the same thing in here as well. The one thing you're going to notice is when you get to your actual pixel controllers, we're going to have this checkbox selected to automatically create overlays from the outputs. So it's looking at our channel outputs and see, saying, hey, there's outputs available, let's create overlays from this. Hop back to the pixel overlay models option. But now it also auto created them and it manually created them. These are the manuals here. We'll hop back to the outputs page. We'll hop back to the outputs page. And if you can see, I actually have two sets of overlay models here. They should be identical. Sometimes they haven't been. This first set here are the manually created ones that FPP Connect made. And then down here are the auto automatically created ones that FPP made. So what I like doing to help kind of start from scratch again is uncheck this. And then right below that, since these are the manual ones, select the first one, go all the way down to the bottom while holding shift and control, select that last one that'll select them all, hit delete and then save. And since we uncheck this, once we restart FPPD here, I'm gonna refresh the page and cool, we are empty. We have no overlay models here. Now, if I hop back into x Lights and do FPP Connect again, how it creates manual models and automatic, that could be fixed by switching models to none if you wanted to, and that would probably help the issue if this is something that you run into. I'm gonna re-upload these again to kind of get fresh data in there. Maybe there's something that it didn't wanna overwrite, or there is a blip in the connection and it didn't overwrite write a port properly. Something like that could have happened, which great example, here's a couple errors right here that my virtual matrix controller, which I actually have selected twice. 
Got a 503 response code, which is okay. We aren't testing that right now. And then we'll hop back into our K8. If I refresh my pixel overlay model page, we should have fresh overlays created again. I have noticed by doing this, this can help solve a couple issues. I've ran into with FPP6.x that the overlays don't always play nicely when you re-upload. So I have all my overlays back in my controllers for the ones I deleted. They're fresh, they're new. These should no longer be an issue. If you've gone through all that and you're still having issues, probably gonna be a hardware related issue. Could be something as simple as you have the wrong prop on the port or you have your ports mislabeled, it's plugged into the wrong Phoenix connector, something like that on the controller. Or it could be a bad extension, it could be a bad pixel. There's a couple of things that it could be, but the easiest way to test it is to pick up one of these pixel testers. A lot of the vendors are selling these these days. They're a couple of bucks, you pair it up with a wall wart power supply, and you can run an extension cord to your wall wart and get right up to your first prop. This way you can actually test the pixels on a different controller knowing that if the pixels work your issues between the extension and the controller where if the pixels don't work you know that your issue is actually with the pixels itself good example was i was at a buddy's house the other day his lights were stopping there was like six left at the end that weren't lighting up we hooked up a pixel tester and still the same six weren't lighting up so it wasn't a channel count it wasn't a node count issue he's got a bad light in line that he has to change out Another great example was I was actually troubleshooting my display. I had a couple of P-stake toppers that weren't acting quite right and I couldn't figure it out. I re-rendered, I looked at the channels, I spent probably close to an hour on it. Went out to the control box, found that I actually flipped port two and three on the remote receiver coming out of the gland. So what I thought was port two is actually port three. So once I figured that out, it was an easy solve, but it came down to a hardware issue and not a configuration issue. The issue was me. Testing our displays and troubleshooting them is a big part of this hobby. There's a ton of resources out there and people that want to help troubleshoot issues. You got the X-Lite Zoom Room. You have tons of groups on Facebook. Your local group, that's great if you want someone local that can actually show up and probably help you out. I do that for a couple of the people around me. I try to go to their house and actually show them how to fix their issues instead of just telling them how. And at the end of the day, there's only a few basic things that need to happen for your lights to go red green blue but a majority of the time it's going to come down to something simple that is an easy solve if you learned something today give the video a like consider subscribing to fpp shorts i'll have more tips tricks and tutorials coming out real soon